it's me, Jeanette. How are you? Hope you've been doing amazing, fantastic. I <laughs> hope everything is going well. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing to decorate the pages of this junk journal. I will have the videos of this uh, junk journal process video down below. So I've made this from scratch. I've used a long reach stapler to bind all of these pages together and then I have, I want to say that it's three videos total showing how I made this journal up to this point. And I wanted to continue filling this up, um, just adding different bits and pieces to it because I really, it's really one of my favorite junk journals that I've ever made. I don't know, it's just really fun to flip through. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video, just continuing to add odds and ends. So here I'm adding a washi tab to this postcard that was sent to me by Marissa, AKA cat girl. Uh, I've had this postcard for a while. It was uh, quite a bit, a long time ago that she sent it to me and I've just been holding it onto it and she's just an online friend, but it's still really special to me and I wanted to save it in my junk journal. And so I'm just adding a washi tape tab so that I can see that there's something in this stripey bag. Next, I'm going to be washi taping some uh, pocket page inserts from a Heidi Swap planner, memory planner that I ordered, but there was something faulty with the cover, and so I contacted American Crafts and they were kind enough to send me another one. And so I had these extra inserts from the first faulty journal, sorry, fr faulty planner, so I didn't know what to do with them, so I just saved them and I've been adding them. I use them in my Christmas junk journal and also to this junk journal because you can just washi tape them and it you know washi tape them into a journal or a traveler's notebook and you can reuse them or if you have a, another sort of ring bound planner that you're using for planning then what you can do is add washi strips to both sides of the insert because there's already some pre-punched holes but if you just put washi tape on both sides on top of the pre-punched holes, then you can repunch them and use them in a regular, like whatever planner, ring bound planner that you're using. So just a quick tip, I hope that made sense. And if it doesn't make sense, if something I say doesn't make sense, please feel free to uh, as, ask questions in the comments. And I do try to read all the comments and answer, answer any questions that you might have. I feel like sometimes I don't explain things clearly or properly or maybe succinctly. So please don't be shy. You can leave questions and I will try to answer them. So here I'm adding this note card, which was a piece of a note card, which is originally for Kara, my first boss at Sizzix. And what happened was that I, I messed up or on the original note card. And so I, I just trimmed it, saved the pretty illustration on the front. And then I, of course I gave Kara another card. I don't know what I must've messed up on like what I was writing. So I wanted to save it because I thought it was just a really cute illustration. Originally it's from the Target dollar spot, which I miss every single day. Oh my gosh. I miss Target so much, probably more than food. Like if you asked me right now, if I wanted to go to In-N-Out Burger or Target, I would probably pick Target hands down. Now the little uh, envelope that I'm adding here and these die cuts and these beautiful paper bits were sent to me by a very kind online friend also, but who I've met in real life. So she's a real life friend as well, Catherine Crucifond. I am so sorry, Catherine, if I said your last name wrong. If you would like to follow Catherine, she is a prolific pen paler, snail mail artist. She, uh, her Instagram is, I will have that link below because it's, it's changed a few times. So I'll make sure to look up the right Instagram account so that you can follow her. She's from France. She's got some really cute things. Now I'm at the last, so I finished up my glue stick. It's not coming out anymore, but I do like to get every single bit of glue out of the container and usually use my pinky and just kind of dig in there and get the glue out, but it makes your fingers really sticky. And so I'm just using a spatula and spreading the last bits of glue on, you know, the different areas that I need it for. And it's really helpful. It, it makes it a lot easier. You really get every single last bit of glue out. You really feel like, I don't know, I don't know about you, if you would have thrown the glue stick out at this point since you couldn't reach the glue, you know, like, I don't know, you can't reach in there too easily. Um, but I, I like to get like the most value for my money, I guess. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just feel like a, like a responsible citizen of the world. It's much like with my paper scraps. I just feel responsible when I use up every last bit of scrap paper that I have. 
I don't know if that's just me. Let me know. I would love to know in the comments if you have a moment to leave a comment, if you are the type of person that would be scooping out every last bit of ounce, every last bit and ounce of glue out of your little container. <laughs> When I was first assembling my junk journal, I used pages from an old planner that I didn't end up using, which always happens. I don't know if that's everybody or if it's just me. You start off with a planner, you're like, yes, I'm excited, I'm going to be organized, and then you don't end up using it really. So I didn't want it to go to waste. I pulled out some pages from a classic happy planner and I incorporated them into my junk journal but I wanted to cover them up with some pattern paper just so that they wouldn't be obviously planner pages, just to make them more presentable, I guess. And now I have this piece of uh, heat embossed vellum. So like I used pink embossing powder, which I believe was from Nuvo. And this was a leftover scrap from a work project and I really liked the look of vellum heat embossed vellum and so I wanted to put this to find the perfect spot to put this in my journal so I'm flipping through all these pages trying to see where I'm going to glue this down and I am deciding on this page here because when you flip it so when it's open it looks good from the front and the back well at least to me I think it looks nice there's lots of pattern play lots of things my retinas are being rocked because there's so much to look at Next up, I have a note card from Betty B's Designs. And this note card was in a goodie bag from a planner meetup that I attended. And it's beautiful. I didn't, <laughs> is that selfish that I didn't want to give this away to anybody? Because it's a note card for you to give to somebody. But I just wanted to keep it because I thought the art on it was really stunning. And there is the link for you to check out the Etsy shop. And so, yeah, I just wanted to keep this beautiful note card in a junk journal and again I've said this a million times you guys are probably tired of me saying it but junk journals have such negative has like a negative connotation to me in my head because all these things are not junk I absolutely love every single little thing in here it should be called like a happy things journal <laughs> so I'm just continuing to add odds and ends to my junk journal flipping through all the various pages and trying to find a spot a special spot for my little ephemera and my die cuts and my journaling cards i don't know that's really the fun part about once you have assembled your junk journal is the process of filling the pages is just flipping through and trying to find just the right spot for whatever it is you want to glue down now a lot of the things that are in my junk journal are things that i've received from racks so random acts of kindness where kind people just send me goodies like handmade cards or die cuts or ephemera or just little little uh, bits and beautiful little bits and pieces and so um if you have actually got a question from Rosie O on one of my uh, previous junk journaling videos and she asked what I do with the things that are sent to me like pen pal letters and the pen pal letters they go into a tote storage bag I really need to get a box for them but the reason they're in a tote is because uh, if you saw my last video I one of the last videos that I posted in the new year about my intricate system of tote bag storage <laughs> oh my gosh I finally got storage boxes guys so I need to get one for my pen pal letters and right now they are in a tote bag and those are near my luggage because whenever i go to the states which i isn't very often but whenever i do go back home i like to take some of those pen pal letters with me so that i can put them properly in storage in a tub <laughs> where we're keeping all of our stuff and so that's what I do with the letters, but any like little bits and pieces like ephemera and die cuts or tags or ribbons or things that are sent to me that I can use in a junk journal, then I definitely use. And I feel like that's a great way. So if you have a lot of pen pals and a lot of just bits and pieces that you don't really know what to do with, then a great thing to do would be to use them in junk journals. The perfect way to save beautiful things that you love. Now here I am taking out the fallout that got stuck 
here in this intricate die. It's part of a die set that's a little like mini dream catcher, which is really cute. And it's from a set that I got at work. And so I'm just picking out all the little bits with my tweezers, my Sizzix tweezers. I can't find my pokey tool in my caddy. So I'm using these awesome tweezers from Sizzix, which I really love because they have this really sharp end on like just a really fine, it's almost like wire, but it's really sharp, really cool tweezers. My favorite tweezers, if that was even possible. Is it possible to have favorite tweezers? I guess it is. So these Sizzix tweezers are my favorite. So now that I've picked out all the little bits from this intricate die, I am going to put it here so that it pops out. The thing that I love about junk journaling is when the pages, my pages aren't all the same size. So when you open your junk journal, you can kind of see the different uh, sized pages and I don't know just the the pattern play and the variation in the sizes just I don't know there's just something about it that makes me happy and here I was adding a washi tape border just to the edge of my one of the pages just to add interest and I'm going to be using my tiny attacher to staple some things in here like this scrappy white piece of cardstock that I stamped some sentiment stamps from my stash just in black. Uh, I was going to be using them for a project, but it just never uh, happened. So I just ended up stapling them in here because I thought they were cute. And here is another scrap from a stamping project that I was working on for work. Again, didn't end up using it. So I'm just putting it in my junk journal. And I think a, a great way, it's, I mean, it's so easy to just staple things, little odds and ends into your journal with a tiny attacher or a stapler. I really prefer the Tim Holtz tiny attacher because the staples are itty bitty. They're so cute. <laughs> I don't know. It's just um, really easy to use. Another great tool to have if you're going to be doing junk journaling besides a stapler or a tiny attacher is a single hole punch. So here I am hole punching this um, tag as I want to place it there. So I'm just hole punching the page and then threading a scrappy piece of ribbon that I had and then threading it through the tag and then just looping it through. And then I have just this nice little um, texture, like some added texture with that ribbon, that satin ribbon. And I don't know, it's just a, a great way to add things to <laughs> to your junk journal pages. Just have a single hole punch and just punch some holes on your pages so that you can thread, you know, tags or scraps of ribbon that you might have lying around that you're not quite sure what to do. You can just hole punch a page and add those to your, to your, um, to your junk journal. Sorry. This postcard was also included in one of the goodie bags from Planner Meetup that I attended, and it's from Note and Wish Etsy shop. I thought it was really nice. It's like watercolored, beautiful watercolor there, and so I wanted to save it. I was gonna put it either in a traveler's, one of my traveler's notebooks, or in a junk journal. So I opted to use it in this junk journal because I really loved the colors. They're absolutely stunning, and so I'm just adding that, gluing that onto this page. And the last thing that I'm adding to my junk journal for now is this Tim Holtz uh, white piece of cardstock with this Tim Holtz stamp on there. So the last time that I was visiting uh, California, I went over to visit my brother-in-law and my nieces and his mother-in-law was there and she had some stamps with her. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this stamp. Can you please just stamp a piece of white cardstock so that I can have it and look at it and maybe add it to a junk journal? So she was kind enough to do that for me. And so I just wanted to add that in here just to remember that day, but also to have that beautiful Tim Holtz. It's a Tim Holtz for stampers anonymous stamp and I'm going to try to find it and find it because maybe it, it's nice. I would like to eventually add it to my stash and I'm done with this junk journal video for today. I hope to add, continue to add to this junk journal. It's just so much fun, but thank you so much for watching. If you would like to watch any more, sorry, see more of my crafty projects, then you can subscribe to my channel or you can follow me on Jeanette Lane blog on my Instagram account. I try to post there pretty regularly. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in a video real soon. Bye.